Okay, money making conversation now. She's on the phone. She, she, doesn't, she doesn't even know me. I watch it on TV. I love this lady because I, I'm, uh, I got I got to bring her up. Let me introduce everybody. Tell everybody who I love. Okay, my next guest is a celebrity chef. Bam, my morning talk show host on Food Networks, The Kitchen, author of Sunny's Kitchen. Hint, hint. Easy food for real life and an entrepreneur. Because we're gonna talk about this in Inflatium. Please welcome to Money Making Conversation, Sunny Anderson. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Hey, that was a nice introduction. Makes me feel special. Okay, I'm going to tell you <laughs> something. I'm busy. I'm going to tell you something. First of all, y'all, y'all, y'all are special because I watch you on TV. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, take all this stuff. It's almost, um, when I see you on TV, I'm jealous because she's so natural on TV. You know, you, you know, you know it's, like, it's, like, it's like watching a person who's, uh, I don't care if I see you on any TV show where she's making food, it's almost like I'm watching you in your kitchen at the house, hanging out with your mom, your best friend, your cousin, <laughs> the nieces and nephews. That's a skill set that you have, Sonny. I admire it for you, and I'm jealous. Oh. <laughs> well, listen, I'm, that is a huge compliment because I feel like, you know, when I watch TV and I have my favorites, they feel like people that I'm just hanging out with. Maybe I want to go get a beer with or, you know, just like be cool with. Um, so it's cool that I give that vibe off. Uh, but I, I always tell people when they say they'd love to hang out with me, I am so boring. <laughs> so boring. Like the so. best mm-hmm. days for me are, um, you know, like no shower, no errands, no nothing. I just sit and, you know, watch TV or cook and hang out with the dogs and the cats. Now, what, what do you, uh, just curiosity, where are you based at? So I live in New Jersey now, Mm -hmm. um, and for uh, since 2001, um, up until about two years ago, I lived in New York and in Brooklyn. So Mm -hmm. I'm just kind of like New York adjacent now and loving it. Absolutely. There's nothing wrong with living in New Jersey and commuting to New York. It's awesome. Now, here's the thing about your talents, and we're going to talk about uh, this, uh, this nacho that I'm going to make for my Super Bowl. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the inflation. Okay. We're going to talk right. about all this stuff. But I just want to talk about Sonny right now, you know, the radio <laughs> okay. DJ Sonny, the Air Force yep. Sonny, you know, this background that I knew nothing about that I like to bring up bring up on the show. That's why I give everybody two breaks. I want to learn a little bit about the person. Uh, let them know that you just, just pop up and suddenly start cooking on national TV. There's a journey uh-huh. to that. So tell us a little history yeah. about the Air Force, the transitioning from from a radio all the way to catering, and then then this celebrity chef status. Yeah. So I mean, I think you're right. There's a journey um, to wherever we are in the present, especially if it's a present. And I feel like I'm living in a present every day. Um, I started right out of high school in the Air Force because I wanted to be in broadcasting and journalism because it was what I was focused on in high school. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so when I got into the Air Force, uh, I trained for that and uh, became a broadcaster journalist in the Air Force. And very simply, you know, knew that I wanted to do more when I got out of the military after four years. Um, I just continued in radio, and you know, mm-hmm. um, you, you can't do anything unless you're ready to move, or <laughs> if you're lucky enough, um, you know, you're at what we call like a heritage jock, where you're from the city, mm-hmm. and you get to kind of really grow mm-hmm. your roots in that city and become major. So not being from anywhere as a military brat, my choice was to move around, get my resume up so I could get to New York, and I thankfully did in 2001, so... Um, you know, I got here, I was doing what I was always doing in other cities and other places I'd live, which is, you know, eating and feeding myself. Right, and, right, right. um, you know, as a single person, you bring that food to work, the leftovers, whether it's cookies or if it's the other half of the meatloaf. And I just started finding that that was my calling card. You know, people expected me to show up with food and, um, that really just, um, you know, snowballed into a catering business because so many people kept asking. And um, after I was charging for just the groceries and I thought people would stop asking because I charged them for the food, Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. you know, it just um, got to the point where people said, oh, there's a price for this? Sure. And so I turned it into a catering company, talked about it on my radio show when I was on Radio New York, and that's how uh, Food Network found me um, through Emerald Lagasse. So, um, you know, a lot of, like, choices and, and trials and tribulations and journeys in between, you know, there and here. Um, and I would argue that 
there's still another here to get to, and I'm there <laughs> right, right now. <laughs> right, right, right. So right. I think it's always like a journey of chasing goals and dreams, and um, hopefully they pan out. And if they don't, you have a, a couple more ideas on the back burner. Yeah, because I, I feel you can act. I feel you are a very talented. I feel you have comedic chops. I feel that if you wanted to, you could star in your own sitcom. That's funny you say that because maybe about three or four years ago, uh, Aquarius kept because I I like to practice not talking about things till they happen, just in case they don't, and it didn't. Um, I had a sitcom deal uh, that was going to be about my life and my career with a major um, production house, and we uh, had a an awesome. Um, Pilot written by Ali Leroy, who did uh, Everybody Hates Chris on, and man. so many other um, excellent productions. And we just didn't get picked up. It wasn't the right timing. Um, um, and so, I'm, I, you know, you move on. It's still in the back of my head to, you know, reboot that idea. Maybe it'll be better timing later on. But um, I don't know. I, you know, I could, I think I could be myself, right? Which is what I was going to do in that series. But I don't think I could. After watching the SAG Awards last night, you know, uh, someone said in the SAG Awards, uh, the actors really, their biggest job is to get up there and be liars. It's really hard for me to to lie. You know what I mean? It's like I see myself being someone else when I would send in, you know, audition tapes. And it's like, who is that girl? So I don't know. <laughs> no, no. Let's stop right quick. Let's stop right there. Let's stop right this madness here. You're, you're talented. I already told you I'm mad at you because you're talented and you're casual. But, I, but here's the point. I want to point out something about, I always tell people, the money that you make in your 30s, in your 40s, and your 50s, mm -hmm. and later on in life is a skill that mm -hmm. you develop in your 20s. And so mm -hmm. now I understand why she's so natural and so casual on TV, because when she was bringing food to her job and she was developing that little skill set on how to talk and how to share and how to make little notes. And then she carried that to radio. She just, I always say, like, radio, if it's done really well, is, uh, is, uh, is, is reality. It's is theater. Yeah. It's, 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 uh -huh. it's visual. If you're doing it really well, you actually conceptualizes the moment. It's beyond the music. That's why music video was so popular at one time, because people actually saw songs tied to a vision, and a, a, a vision, a video. And so, so when you were doing those early stages of bringing food to work and People go, oh, what's that, Sonny? Oh, girl, this is this. This is these nachos. This is this sandwich. This is this cake. I pulled it out of the oven, and it was really – and, and then she go, on, she go on the radio and say the same thing. So those <laughs> skills were honed and developed when you was at the radio station, and you was in your 20s. And so yeah, now – I would you, agree. I, 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 I'm telling you, I always tell people on my show, listen to me. Sometimes when people develop <laughs> their resumes – they don't go back into their resumes and understand that you can actually move further faster if you go back to the early stages of a resume and find out oh, yeah. exactly what you were doing because that's what you should uh -huh. be doing right now. Well, yeah. You know, also, there's so many different skill sets, and I think uh, what I'm trying to do for a living, which is share my excitement about things with others and still be able to pay my own bills with it, right? So. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, at one point I'm in the military. I love the military. I share the military story as I'm in the military. Um, and then when I'm in radio, I talk about things I like, pop culture, music, artists, things that I love, uh, food as well, right? Mm -hmm. And then when I get to TV, I can talk about the food and the travels to get to the food. And, and so I always feel like I'm sharing, but I'm also selling an idea. And so when I was out of work between radio and television, um, the first job I looked for was sales because I know if I like something, I can sell you on it. And so I think a lot of times people think that a direct line is what happens in a career, and sometimes you have to look at that resume and say to yourself, well, what are the skills within the skills uh, that I could do elsewhere? And after I did sales at a radio station, I went to go do um, loan sales, you know, uh, I just feel like I can convince people sometimes. Right, so, right. Well, you can. Um, you convince me yeah. every time, on, on every TV <laughs> show you're on, uh, my eyes go to you. It's so, um, even when there's other players, uh, talented people on the screen, because you just come across so natural. Don't lose that quality. That's why uh, I've been uh -huh. I've been fortunate to cast and uh, and produce a, a tremendous, a lot of talented people. And, uh, and uh, as, as, as Kim Whitley said, I discovered her. 
And so, uh, <laughs> I, and I claim I discovered Gabrielle Union too on Sister Sister. I'm claiming, I'm claiming, girl, right. I'm claiming it. So right. I, I, I don't have to claim I discovered you because you're out there and you just know that you, you're winning because you're being yourself. And if you it's lose, if you lose, <laughs> If you lose, if you're not gonna be yourself, and you're and you're being yourself, and so my whole thing is that I I I um uh, I'm a wannabe. I'm a wannabe baker. I'm a wannabe radio guy. I'm a wannabe a motivator. I'm a wannabe, and and I understand that ability in me because I master the ability to change, and you do it on a regular basis, and it's so natural mm-hmm. to you. Now I just finished my uh, since since you're a celebrity chef, I just finished my baker spotlight. Um, uh, recipe contest this past Sunday where uh-huh. I, I, I searched the country and all that for the best new baker that's unknown. And you got this Sonny's Touchdown Nachos now. Yes. Okay. Now, I'll just let you know, your, your boy, I just had to put my little resume out in front of you just, just in <laughs> case you thought I was just a regular old DJ on Money Making Conversation. Your boy can bake, okay? Your boy got some skills. Okay, now, I want to post this on my, uh, because you know Chef Jamaica. She's one of, every Wednesday, every Wednesday, she posts on my Facebook page, whatever she wants to post. Every Absolutely. And so I want to post this on my, do you have an image of this? Because I want to post it like this. I have 740,000 Facebook followers, just to let you know. Your boy Uh got followers. Okay, and so I want to be able to support you. But when we come back, I want to talk about the Inflatium. I want to tell everybody what's in that Sonny's Touchdown Nachos because yeah. she's my favorite person in the cooking industry. I got my boy also out there, uh, Jeff Janelle. If, he's, if, he, if I don't say his name, he's going to get mad at me too. I, now, uh, Ann Burrell, she'll get mad at me too. We'll be right back with more Sonny Anderson. We'll be right back with more. From Rashawn McDonald and Money Making Conversations. Don't touch that dial. Well, we're back with, well, we are back with Money Making Conversation. On the phone is celebrity chef, morning talk show host on Food Network's The Kitchen, author of Sunny's Kitchen, Easy Food for Real Life, and Entrepreneur. This week is Super Bowl week. And if you're going to do, if you're going to have a talented person on, that's going to talk about food, you got to have Sunny on the phone. Sunny, tell us about this. Uh, <laughs> Sonny's Touchdown Nachos that's going to be posted on Rashawn uh-huh. McDonald's social media this week with a photo. <laughs> Indeed. Well, you know, uh, if you're going to have someone on talk about food and sports, I might be the right person because I love both. <laughs> so thank you for having me on. Uh, I feel honored. Anytime anyone wants to talk to me around sports, because as you know, uh, for many years, people wouldn't even assume a woman uh, was into it. So I am into sports and into eating sports uh, food, and nachos are just uh, where you want to start. Either that or a hot dog, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So the nachos, like, they're, they're so, I, I call them so basic a lot of times because they're just so simple. I feel like if someone wanted to make these ultimate nachos, they'd just go over the top with things, and sometimes the smallest things make a difference. And so um, from the time that I was in Texas, growing up, uh, but the cheese part of the nachos is simple. It is a block of processed mm-hmm. cheese mm-hmm. and a jar of salsa. But what I like to do that is a little bit uh, different and it adds so much flavor is add some cumin, some ground cumin to that mm-hmm. cheese sauce. And then for like the meat layer, um, I'll mix up the chorizo and I mix up the uh, ground chuck together. Mm-hmm. And so you have kind of like the, the flavor going on, as well as, you know, that meaty chew that you want from the beef. Um, so they kind of uh, really marry well together. Mm-hmm. And then everything else is just kind of like, well, you want some cilantro, you want some red onions, you want some sour cream, mm. drizzles. Everything, everything. You know? Yeah, just everything is piled on top. I think the most important thing about any nachos is proper layering. I don't care what sauces and what kind of meat you have on it. If the top is all wet and the bottom's all dry, come, come on. on. You at the yeah, bottom you and you don't have nothing on it? Yeah. You don't have nothing on exactly. your chip? <laughs> nothing has touched your bottom chip? That's a horrible nacho pile. Yeah, I mean, well, you need a couple for stability, you know, that you pull out from the bottom just to dig into the top. But, you know, my, my method is usually lay some chips down, you know, just lay half the toppings down, lay mm. some more chips down, the rest of the topping. I'll tell you something. I knew how I loved her. Okay, first of all, I'm from Houston, Texas. Okay, that's where I'm born okay. and raised. So I'm a Tex-Mex phenomenon. I mm-hmm. have been searching Every every I mean I've lived in uh, Houston, I live in Atlanta, I live in New York, Chicago, Los Angeles, travel all over this country as a stand-up comedian. Mm. I've always have been searching for the ultimate 
nachos. I went to the best restaurant. They they put a little slab of cheese and guacamole uh-uh. and sour Struggle cream twice. and fajita meat, and they call that a nacho. Are you kidding me? <laughs> That's not a nacho. <laughs> a nacho is a pile of chips. <laughs> They're layered with the, when when you reach in the middle, you got something coming out with you except a chip. I yeah, can't, you got something. I can't stand people that that don't get it right. These restaurants out here fooling people. This menu, this recipe right here, Sonny's Touchdown Nachos. She's telling you she got the history. She's from Texas now. See, you got to go to the mm-hmm. Sometimes you don't go to Canada for barbecue. No. 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 You don't I mean, go to Oakland for sushi. No. <laughs> you go to Texas no. for Tex-Mex. Okay. That's where I'm from. Okay. Barbecue. That's where I'm from. That's all Hello. I'm just telling everybody. So, so, so Sonny's <laughs> Touchdown Nachos is the thing. Okay. Mm-hmm. The, okay. Cool. Now let's go to the. So that it, recipe is is actually a recipe that I put on um, my one of my new products that came out this year with Party City. I have a food truck utensil caddy, oh and so I made up this imaginary you know food truck that would pull into a football parking lot tailgate, mm. and I put like these fake recipes on the side of the food truck, <laughs> and that's actually one of them. My touchdown nachos. <laughs> okay, cool. That's that's going to be posted this week on my social media, okay? Awesome. Promoting you and your tremendous brand. Now, let's go to the Inflatium, <laughs> the entrepreneur side of you, the Inflatium, which is like, yeah. what, 30 inches wide and 30 inches long. You put mm-hmm. – this, do, do, you, it's your commercial. You do your thing. Tell us about it. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, the Inflatium is an inflatable snack stadium. Um, if you can imagine, many people would build them with aluminum foil and cardboard to resemble a stadium, fill them with snacks for their party. Uh, and it's not super sanitary, uh, the old school way, and also not reusable. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I decided to come up with something that I could use over and over again, still have that wow effect at my football party without all the work because I don't have time, I don't have the skill, and I'm, I'm very cheap when it comes to stuff. So I like the idea of, like, buying something I can reuse. So uh, the Inflatium is that. I sketched it out. I was actually tailgating with the guys at Party City at the Giants games for many years. And who knew it was going to be like a golf course where you're doing business. But I literally uh, gained so much knowledge about uh, production and um, sales and stuff like that just from hanging out with um, that team. And so when I was putting together this idea, I felt like they'd be uh, the right place to go. They're all about parties. Um, and it's not a party without food, let's be honest. So it was really, really cool to present them the idea of Inflatium a couple of years ago for them to say, yeah, we think this works, um, after I went in with the pitch and everything. And uh, we started working. So now we're in our second year. Uh, Inflatium did so well. It, uh, you know, naturally it fills up with food, but it can also be used as a cooler. Um, and it sits on a coffee table or like a regular dining room table and, and then folds right back up and flattens uh, to go into your closet. So we've got that. And now, like I mentioned before, uh, we've got a utensil caddy that looks like a food truck so you can hold your utensils and your napkins. And we even um, created a table runner, a tablecloth uh, plastic that you could put down as vinyl that looks like a parking lot. So if you put everything on top of it, it looks like, you know, a tailgating situation is going down at your 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 i call couch gating party <laughs> that's awesome that's awesome so this is I'm really, really cool. excited about it you should be okay so that means there's two things i got to post on my social media this week <laughs> the inflatium and the touchdown nachos <laughs> You, you know putting, it. You're putting me to work. you putting me to work. I don't even know you, and you got me working. This is this is not a good relationship. <laughs> this is not a good relationship. I got my staff. But you I go, know what? Uh-huh. <laughs> I was listening to your commercial break, and I believe it was Yolanda Adams. You had him before, and the mm-hmm. sound bite you said was so true, and it rang true to me. You've got to be ready to invest in yourself. And um, a lot of this stuff that I'm doing now is based on me saving money, um, uh, so that I could dream the dream without going to a bank and asking them to believe in me. I believe in myself, and so if I believe in myself, I can fund myself. You know, I was able to walk into mm-hmm. the world's largest um, party wholesale goods company 
uh, by myself to pitch an idea, and I was ready to walk out if it didn't sound right, even though these are my, you know, drinking buddies, you know? Right, right. So, um, and when you come in with the weight of your own financing and backing yourself, there's just a different level of confidence and um, um, a vibe that you bring to a, a corporate setting uh, that allows people to say, well, heck, if they're going to take a, a chance on themselves, maybe I will too, you know? Let me believe in this. And I would argue that is definitely one of the secrets to uh, my success with Inflatium um, and getting it up and running within a year of pitching it to Party City. Well, it's fantastic, and you're on my show talking about it at the perfect time. So we got a lot, yeah. got a busy marketing week. The big the game. The Sonny Anderson Marketing Week is on starting today. <laughs> it's okay. on. You know, Rashawn got Rashawn. No, Rashawn's getting busy. I'm launching it. I'm launching her campaign today on Money Making Conversation. But before That's I, right. I'll be remiss. I got a couple of minutes left in our interview here. The Kitchen. Mm-hmm. This is a show again. Yes. This is where a lot of talented people on the show. But whenever Sonny starts talking. I think she's talking to me. I'm. A, I really. She's talking to me. She's sampling those little desserts and just making these things. What makes that show work for you, the kitchen? Well, I think you know what you described. I think I call you know pick your pony television. We've got four dynamic uh, co-hosts. We're all from different places. We all grew up with different flavors, vibes, styles, languages, etc. Uh, the norm is different for each of us. And so I like the idea that someone might watch and think I am so annoying, but then just love my girl Katie or Jeff or GZ and vice versa, you know, someone that might watch me and say, I can only pay attention. Oh, you, everything you're saying makes sense to what I, you know, I know. That's because maybe we have some of the same things in our, um, our nurture, you know, and our nature. So uh, it's really cool to be on a show where a lot of different vibes are represented and I think that's what makes it work. Plus, we really do love eating. <laughs> we love cooking. But, you know, I tell people all the time, my job, my career isn't to be a chef or cook. I actually eat more than I cook uh, because I get to sit on these shows and eat all this awesome food. So I think that's what works. Plus, it's like, who wouldn't want to eat food from different people? It's free, you know? <laughs> like, So I think watching someone live in their best life is pretty awesome and i like to watch that out there in the world too so i can imagine if i'm living my best life and giving that well, off living. it's awesome that people are watching it i'm just telling you we got to close this out with a with an uplift statement about how talented <laughs> you are please please sitcom you're a sitcom star i, I know it i believe in it i will i, I I've, I've discovered and worked with too many talented people i got i got busy and my staff is going to be busy it's all about sunny this week to promote the inflatium the touchdown nachos and your brand you keep winning. Thank you you so can come much. on my show anytime, Sonny. Come on my, anytime. I'm a fan. I'm a friend and a believer in your talents. 